Alright, welcome to today's lesson on Swing, where we're going to learn how to take the GUI that we've been working on and creating in Swing and attaching that to an actual functional program. So, now that we've created our GUI, we need to figure out how to make it respond to user activity. So when a uh, user clicks a button or types something into a text box or whatever. But before we can do this, we need to actually look at how we've organized our code. And so far, we've clumped our code into three basic groups. We have our model, our view, and our startup. Our model is basically everywhere where we're manipulating our data. So the examples we've seen of this would be our ICS Tunes class or our Black Blackbook class that we worked on in class. Um, and this is basically where we're trying to organize all of our data, um, storing all of our stuff in instance variables. Everything is, is done in there except for actually outputting it to some sort of a GUI. We've also been working on our view through the swing lessons that we've been taking, and this is where we actually have all the display going on. There's no manipulation of data happening here. This is just used to display the data that we've been compiling in our model. Examples of this would be all of the J panels and J components we put into those J panels to make up our view. We have to make sure that we've got methods in here that are used to create the view and update the display once something has been changed. And then finally we have our startup class, uh, which basically does very limited things. All it really does is, is create an instance of the view and an instance of the model and link those two things together so that they can work with each other. So it looks something like this. If I was going to draw this out in a simple little diagram, I've got my startup method here, which has a main method whose sole responsibility is to initialize the view, which is part of my graphical user interface, and then initialize the model, which contains all the data that I'm actually manipulating in the background. Um, inside my view, I've got a, a method to help me put everything where I want it to go, and then an update method that accesses the attributes of the model to display the data into the components that are in my view. But the part that we're missing is how does this uh, view and this model respond to any user input that we do. Well, to do that, we have to look at how events work. Events basically work the same for every component we have. So a button, a drop-down list, a text box, and so on. They're all going to generally work the same way. There are little uh, intricacies based on the type of component, but we're going to look at them overall. Basically, when something happens to a J component, when I press enter or click a button in it, an event object is created that describes that particular event. That object has information in it, like when did it occur, what keys were pressed when I did it, so I do control something and alt or alt something or whatever, um, and which J component fired that event. So which J component had that action occur to it. We need to create a class that is going to have that object, that event object, as a parameter. This class is then going to figure out how to update the data in the model. The model will then tell the view to update its overall view of what's going on with the data there. This class is called, or set of classes, are called controller classes. These are part of the GUI, and they contain all the code that's going to respond to a particular event that occurs. We're going to make a separate controller class for every J component that we're going to manipulate. We must extend the object class and implement a listener specific to the type of interaction we're looking for. So the controller class extends object and implements either action listener or mouse listener depending on what we want to do. Action listener basically says if the button has been actioned upon. So if I've clicked it or pressed enter on it or any other way that I would fire off uh, um, a button click on that particular component. A mouse listener would, would be used if I need more detailed information about how the mouse was worked. So was the mouse button pressed? Was it released? Was it double clicked, single clicked, clicked in a certain area of our component or whatever? Basically for the most part we'll be using action listener unless we're looking to do something a little bit more advanced in which case we would use mouse listener. The controller class also contains instance variables for the model so that I know where to manipulate the data once a component has been um, actioned upon. And it also contains an instance variable for the component so I can access data from the component itself that I can then use in my model. The controller class is named for the component that it will be manipulated. So for example, I'd have a save controller or a new game controller if I was looking for the save button or a new game button, for example. The constructor will attach the controller to the J component in the model. So this is an example of what a, uh, a constructor would be. So I'd have a public save controller or a public new game controller. And then the parameters are going to be the model that I'm working with where I'm going to uh, modify the data and the component where I would get the data from on my view. 
And then I'm going to basically, in the constructor, attach the model and the component to this particular, to the instance variables that I've listed in that particular class. The methods that are found in your controller class are those that are required by the listener's interface. So depending on whether I'm implementing the action, uh, action performed or the, the action listener or the mouse listener. Okay? The methods in here are going to run any time that that J component has been manipulated. So if I've clicked on the button, it's automatically going to fire the action performed method or the mouse click method depending on which type of action listener I used. Um, they are passed the event object we were talking about earlier and then I can use that code in here to modify the properties of the model um, and uh, based on whatever is in that J component that I've worked with. Okay. So how does this update the code that we've looked at? We now have four types of classes. We've got our startup, We've got our model that manipulates the data. We've got our view that displays the data. And now we have a controller that is going to respond to user actions. So we still have the startup initializing the model and the view. But now the view is also going to initialize the controller. When something happens, it runs the action listener or mouse listener methods uh, that we're looking for, which then goes and updates data in our model, which then goes and updates data in our view using the accessor methods from the model. So before we can actually make this work, though, we have to tell the view that the, control, that the components that are there have a listener, have code that is going to respond to an action that happens. This is done by using an add something listener command, where this something or this x is the type of listener. So add action listener, add mouse listener. This is going to provide an instance of the controller as an argument. So it looks like this. So this being my particular uh, view that I'm working with, the component that I'm working with in that view, I'm going to add an action listener to it and I'm going to provide the controller class that is going to have the actions that we want to have happen when that particular component is interacted with. Now since most GUIs have several controllers, because we're going to have several buttons and things that we want to have actions performed with, it makes it easier to have a helper method that is responsible for doing all the controllers for us, called the register controllers method. This method is called when the view is constructed. So after we've done a layout, we would then run the register controllers method where we would go and actually register all the controllers. And if we look at this code here, we have two lines for each controller. One is we create an instance of the controller class where we provide the model so we can get access to the data and the component so we can get access to the data that's in the view. We then have to make sure that we add the action listener to the component so that it is able to respond to an action that occurs. And this action listener requires that controller so it knows where to go when that action is performed, where to go to find the code to do something. Now since the controller calls methods in the model to manipulate the data, there needs to be a way for the model to inform the view that data has been changed. So the controller has gone and said, okay, model changes information. I'm adding a person to the class or something, right? Then that, that model needs to tell the view to show that new person in its list of people. We do this by having an update method in our view. This update method is going to be responsible for redrawing the GUI using all of the model's accessor data. So I can get all the information from the model to redraw that view. That means that every method in my model that is going to change the data somehow should end by calling the update method of the view so the view knows to update all of its data in it. So again, let's go back and see how this modifies our code. So we can see here we have our same four sets of classes. The startup method is going to initialize the model and it's going to initialize the view. The view itself is going to lay out all of its components, register the controllers which initializes all of these controller objects. We're then going to wait until some sort of action is performed. When that action is performed, it's going to get data from the components and then provide that data to the methods here to manipulate the data that's in the model. That method will then end with an update method called the update method here, which says to redraw yourself by using the um, accessor methods that get access to the, the data that's stored in our attributes of our model. Now, the last thing we need to do is make sure our view and our model are linked together so that we can do all of this initialization properly. Because you'll notice that we've got instances of the view and instances of the model in each of these different things. So <clears throat> the startup class is going to be responsible for making an instance of both the model and the view. To make the view, it's going to create a J frame that displays the view. The model that we're going to create 
must have an attribute for the view itself because it needs to know where it's going to display the data. This way, I could have multiple different views that I've created for one individual model. So I could have a black book that has a variety of different ways to display the data that's in there. Um, in that model class, I've got a public method used to instantiate the view. Okay, so this allows me the creation. So I've got a method that's called set GUI, which is going to set the GUI or the view of that particular model of data. I then create my view class, which extends JPanel. So my, my startup has a frame, which then puts the panel in it. I have an attribute for the model so that I can link. I know where my, my data is going to come from when I try and use the accessor methods. And then the constructor is going to instantiate the model and call the set GUI method. So here's the constructor of the view. It sets the model, which has been provided by um, when it's been created, and then it calls that model set GUI class so that it, the model itself knows which view we're working with. And then we update our view so we can start running our program. That's it. That's all we've seen today. We'll see you in class tomorrow. We'll take a look at an example program and see how that works with this new environment.